Tim Sheridan and Rafa Sandoval continue the threads they sewed in Future State as the Titans Academy is officially opened and the first students arrive to enroll, immediately challenging their teachers when talk of the infamous Red X surfaces amongst their ranks. Tim Sheridan, much like in his Future State Titans stuff, builds wonderful little introduction here to the new Titans and very much welcome status quo shift. I really enjoyed how much this changed what many of the heroes are used to doing and gave them a challenge without resorting to changing literally every aspect about the character. It's still very much the Beast Boy people love and it's still very much the Nightwing people love. The only change being that they are now officially teachers and they've got to deal with the problems that come with that. The first class also got a good introduction throughout the issue and it gives us a good idea of their personalities and who exactly they are. But of course the mystery is still there being that Red X is one of these students and obviously Red X is a big feature of this issue and as much as Nightwing wants it to be left in the past it doesn't look like it will be and a new Red X is teased at the end of this issue. Of course being the Red X we see in Future State so I'm intrigued to see how we exactly got to the Future State world since we got hints of it a little bit throughout those books and so I'm looking forward to seeing how we end up getting there. Rafa Sandoval again provides some wonderfully crisp looking artwork, delivering some truly beautiful pages and layouts and big splash pages, which is a feat unto itself given how many characters per page he had to draw. So to have the level of consistency he has throughout the book and throughout the Future State stuff he did as well was just fantastic. Teen Titans Academy was a fantastic start to the new awesome direction for the Titans and the new characters that were introduced in this issue. I'm looking forward to some schoolyard drama mixed with the usual Titans action and of course the return of Red X and what the new person under the hood wants from the new Titans. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Teen Titans Academy Issue 1 finds the boat of Titans Academy breach the fog and finally arrive at the T-shaped building, where Nightwing, Starfire and the rest of the former Titans wait to greet the new recruits. Dick is trying to decide on how he'll end the speech as the boat docks, and the heroes take the kids into the assembly to officially welcome them all to the Roy Harper Titans Academy. Starfire takes over the meeting, welcoming the inaugural class and how each was chosen above the rest, not because of their gifts, but because of their wits, their work ethic, and their strength of character, and as Nightwing said, they haven't come to change the world or any world, they are there to save lives and stand up for something larger than themselves. She reminds them that being different is good and worth fighting for, something she hopes they will remember when they graduate and go on to their own teams. The rest of the faculty join her as Garfield wonders if they are supposed to say something, but Cyborg hopes he won't. Starfire tells the kids that when they are all founded the new Titans and this institution, they swore to uphold the ideals of the heroes before them and they took an oath, an oath the kids will now have to recite, something some of them really don't want to do. Later on, Dick meets with his first class in the fight simulator, joking it's their defense against the dark arts class, thinking the kids don't understand the reference, but the kids do, but they find it kinda problematic these days. Dick takes attendance as Dane races into the class late, wondering if this is fight sim combat training, and he missed the ferry apologizing for being so disruptive. Nightwing says it's fine as he explains the class, this is about self-defense, and they will fight each a holographic opponent. The kids immediately ask about Red X as the hologram turns into to Red X. Dick tells whoever is doing it to turn the hologram back to normal, but the holographic Red X begins fighting with a bunch of holographic titans. Dane says that Nightwing was the first and only Red X, but the others think that someone else wore the mask too. Dick says that Gorilla Greg is behind this since he is proficient enough to hack the hologram, but the gorilla says he didn't do it. Nightwing quickly takes down the holograms, deciding to use it as a demo for the kids, saying that it can be fun putting on masks, but they are also there to protect them and allow them to hide from the bad guys as a civilian. Dick easily bests the villain hologram, saying that they need to be able to look in the mirror and recognize the person looking back, mask or no mask, since masks are tools and are necessary, and he admits that when he wore the Red X mask, he nearly lost himself in the darkness of it, and unlike the last two people who wore it, he had the Titans to help pull him back to the light, and that's what this team is for. He quells the idea of Red X, saying that he's dead before moving on. In the cafeteria, Billy Batson and Miguel Montez meet for the first 
first time, learning that they are roommates and maybe possible titans. Alinta and Summer meanwhile talk as Alinta seems distant, but the woman says that she's fine, returning to talking about the surprise party they have for Mr. Nightwing, who Summer has a crush on. Matt and Stitch meanwhile get to know each other, with Stitch reminding the boy that they are non-binary and that she wants his leftover apple. The rest of the team sit together as Miguel and Billy join them, wondering again if they aren't titans, are they teen titans? Billy thinks that they are just freshmen and the faculty are titans and the upperclassmen are the active teen titans. The teen titans meanwhile battle Clock King and his men near Mecca in Saudi Arabia. The titan teachers meanwhile coordinate the battle from the tower, hoping that they will be back in time for the party. Kid Flash asks if there will be pizza and Beast Boy says there will be plenty of pizza for him. Raven reminds Victor he's got to go teach home economics, making Cyborg wonder how he even pulled that job. Garfield reminds him that it's because he made the teaching assignments and because it's funny. Cyborg leaves as Raven wonders what Starfire thinks of the team out in the field. Corey knows that Clock King isn't much of an adversary, but the team is working very well together and recruiting Jakeem and reinstating Bunker made positive difference to the team. Raven is glad since she thinks their hands will be full with a new batch. Brick Meemole trains alone in the simulations, unleashing his full power on the Red X holograms. Donna Troy arrives, impressed with the power he has as he apologizes for the hole in the wall. But Donna doesn't care, knowing that an organic EMP wasn't on his profile. Brick says he doesn't like using it, asking what Donna is doing there. Donna says that she's the boy's faculty advisor, and all his training almost made him miss their meeting wanting to talk with him. The two begin sparring and Donna learns the boy's actual name is Brick and that he has the powers to brick electronics. The two begin their fight as elsewhere, Tubi meets Roundhouse, his upperclassman roommate. Roundhouse isn't too happy he has to share a room as he recognizes Tubi as totally tubular, the shapeshifter who can turn into tubes. Tubi says that it's not just a tube and besides, doesn't Roundhouse just turn into balls? Roundhouse says he turns into big balls but Toby wants to wait and see. Wanting to head to the party they're throwing for Mr. Nightwing. Nightwing's surprise party kicks off as Diego and Marissa contemplate leaving the lame party. Marissa says the least they can do is stay and attend the party, or would they rather Dick throw them back in prison? As the kids play party games, Dick is given a red X mask as a gift, wondering who could have sent the original, which this mask definitely is. But he knows that's impossible since he lost it in his chase with Slade the final night he was red X and never saw it again until now. The hero says that no name was on the box, but knows the kids were dazzled by the Red X's story, wondering how they even heard of it. Dick knows that he never should have let the kids goad him into discussing Red X, but he did shut it down. Something Cyborg knows, thanks to the mask, he definitely didn't. Beast Boy interrupts the whispering as Donna knows that Dick should probably say something to them about it. Nightwing gets the room's attention, showing them the mask and saying that whomever gave it to him, he's not sure how they found it, but he's glad, since it's the perfect reminder of what they hope to achieve at the academy. He points to the titan symbol on the wall, saying that they all wear it because it stands for something, trust, teamwork, and tenacity. He points to Summer and Matt arm wrestling and how the boy trusted someone not to use her ice powers during the competition, demonstrating trust, and while that's only a small thing, they could often fester into bigger things, leading to bigger problems. Dick tells the kids that the reason the school exists is to start them on the right path, and even when it's fun and games, they need to remember who they are, and Red X is what happens when people forget and when people get hurt. He thanks them for the reminder, telling them the lesson is over and he's got work to do, unless there is a piñata for him to hit. Since there is no piñata, it's lights out, something the kids don't like since it's only 9 o'clock. Nightwing heads to the fight sim, where he finds Brick, who upon seeing the hero bolts out of his room. Dick asks the arriving Corey if he was at the party, but she didn't see him. Dick quickly puts the thought out of his mind and Corey is glad since her and him have a date, something Dick remembers knowing that she had something for him. Corey asks if he brought the mask with him, but he left it in the lounge, something Starfire is fine with since they can do what they need to do without it. Dick hopes that he never sees that mask again as someone else in the school is now wearing it, smashing their fists into their bathroom window in a fit of rage. 